All right, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and uh, <clears throat> if I clear my throat, whatever. <laughs> uh, here's the deal. I want to say first and foremost uh, to Teresa and your sister out there in Oklahoma, um, you know, praying for you guys out there uh, to uh, keep strong and fighting uh, the battle. Um, and just wanted to give you guys a shout real quick and say thank you so very much for your email. Thank you so very much for listening in. And to all of you who listen in, thank you guys so very much. It's an absolute blessing <clears throat> and it's awesome to be here. Uh, real quick, um, you know, for those of you out here uh, in PacWest Bigfoot world and are believers like myself, not just in Bigfoot, but in the good Lord, uh, I wanted to say if you guys could give some uh, quick prayers out for Teresa and her and her uh, sister. <clears throat> so, there we go. Um, anyways, uh, come September, if you're not subscribed, PacWestBigfoot.com, PacWestBigfoot.com. You guys can get over there, subscribe, and enter to win. Uh, next month, I'll be giving away an awesome coffee mug with an art print to go with it. And on the coffee mug is an art print as well uh, from a brilliant artist, Sarah Bergman. And also I'll be sharing uh, her link to her stuff uh, on the Facebook page. So there you go. <clears throat> wanted to also say real quick uh, to uh, Sasquatch Coffee Company. Thank you guys so very much. You guys are awesome. I got a little coffee from <laughs> Just like, yeah, that's awesome. Actually, I am not. A, they do not pay me for sponsorship. As a matter of fact, nobody does here. Um, so there you go. I just love the coffee. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to take a, a, a little swig real quick before we get started on this week's awesome based on true story from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Mm. All right. Yes. And actually, uh, listen, yeah, that's my coffee mug. It's made of tin. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Let's get ready. Driver observes small group of Bigfoot along a hillside in Southern Oregon. I thought, perhaps, that if Bigfoot did exist, well, it was solitary, but after watching several or more of them moving on, a, uh, on and about a hillside one night in southern Oregon, well, I have changed my stance on that, not to mention a ton of other things about this world. First off, I am a true believer today in the existence of Bigfoot, and I am actually actively doing some research in the area just outside of Jacksonville, Oregon, when I can. I'm not part of a group or anything, just doing some light stuff here and there. But here is what I observed and how it has created a monster out of me too. On the road again. So, I am, or was then, a newer resident to the Southern Oregon community. I actually moved here in 2002 from Ohio. The move came because of a career change and the offer was something I could not pass up. So after visiting the area about five or six times, the wife and I finally decided on a house. And of course, it was quite a ways out of Jacksonville, pretty far up a place called Sterling Creek Road. <clears throat> it was in the late spring of 2004 that I had my sighting, and it was not just one Bigfoot, but several or more Bigfoot I ended up watching move across a hillside. I was introduced to the idea of Bigfoot as a young boy. My father told me the tales that came from the Pacific Northwest and around the country, as well as some from uh, in, uh, within Ohio itself. Of course, I watched the film of Patty, but that was about as far as it went with me, a legend. Not today, and not even close anymore. My encounter lasted mere minutes, maybe three to four minutes at most, but what I saw could not be mistaken for anything other than some large bipedal primate of some kind roaming the forests and countrysides of the United States and North America in general, I suppose. Here's how it happened and what I saw. I was literally heading out one evening to catch a little concert at the Brit in Jacksonville one evening. Well, late, late afternoon. The sun was still up and it was a warm day. The spring and summer concerts at the Brit were something my wife and I had come to love, especially the symphony. That particular night, however, my wife would not be joining me. She was back in Ohio for a week visiting her mother. Her mom, my mother-in-law, <clears throat> was getting older and wanted to come stay with us as she was feeling lonely and actually having some health issues here and there. So the wife went back to collect her, send her things ahead, and take some time driving back with her across the states all the way to Oregon. It was, a tri uh, it was to be a trip to make memories with, she stated before she left, I remember. <clears throat> Anyways, that is what I was up to that evening before I was interrupted by a family of monsters in the woods. Keeping tempo as they walked around. 
So, I decided to head out, and I knew I was going to miss a little bit of the fanfare that usually happens before the music actually starts, and that was fine with me. At that point, the sun was down behind the mountains, <clears throat> behind me, making things seem like early evening, when in fact, it was not quite at that time, but close enough. The road is a very winding road, full of short little cutbacks that go up and down and over small mountains and hills here and there. Actually, we live practically up a mountain near the tail end of the road itself. I, we, drive and own a Land Rover, so vis visibility is rather nice in almost all directions from the front driver's seat. The driveway to the road I live on is actually long. <clears throat> we live about nearly half a mile back to the end of one. You'll find a lot of homes like that out here. I was coming off the hillside and nearing the main road, Sterling Creek Road, when I noticed silhouettes along the side of a hill across the road from me. First I thought it was just deer, of course, they were all over this place, thousands of them. But as I got closer to the main road and could see the hillside even better, <clears throat> I started to realize that these things were rather large, too large in fact to be deer. I also noticed that they would stand up here and there, weird I thought, it had to be a bear, and a few of them at that, as they were, and a they, in fact, there was more than one. I counted at least four light brown shapes, and in a moment I would see five as a larger one would step out of a cluster of pine trees. I was stunned to see these things, bears I imagined at that point, out so early in the late afternoon or early evening, and in a bunch. We had a ton of black bear around here too, and somewhere the darker brown color is some black bear, in fact not black at all. Besides, I thought they did more of their damage at night, after all. <clears throat> Either way, I slowed down and pulled over to the side of the driveway, close enough to see a bit of the main road at that point. It is not often you get to actually see wild animals like this around here. They are pretty good at keeping out of sight, and that keeps them out of mind for us as well. Until the garden is raided, of course, and the garbage cans are tore up, at least. I pulled over, kept the car running, and watched intently. It took a few moments before I noticed two of them, the smaller ones, walk. And when I say walked, I mean they literally stood up and walked over to the larger ones. One remained behind. This is when I started getting that funny feeling, that chill up your spine, that something is wrong. And then a second later, everything I've come to believe about what is out here changed. Just as the two that stood up and walked over, just as the two that stood up and walked over to the larger one, the darker brown individual, one stepped, uh, <clears throat> outstepped the largest creature animal I'd ever seen, just from inside the trees. I was staring at Bigfoot. I knew what it had to be. The only reference I had, though, was some contro that controversial film about fifty years ago. But I knew what I was staring at. I was about two hundred, two hundred fifty yards away, maybe. But this was tall, brown, light brown colored beast stepped out from behind a clump of trees and in one step was next to the other larger Bigfoot and I could see it plain as day. <clears throat> For some reason, and quickly, I turned off the engine and eased myself out of the car and without making any noise. This was better than the symphony. Yes, I can say that I was feeling those icy chills at my spine <clears throat> and my mind was racing as fast as my heart was at that moment but I felt like I was at least safe enough, or a safe enough distance, to get out and get a better view of these, well, Bigfoot. Bigfoot on the mountain. It was not dark. It was still day, but the shadow that covered them kept me from reali realizing their full height, I believe. But between the white oak, black oak, and the different types of cedar and pine trees all around, I got a pretty good idea about the size and width. It'd be the next day that I would actually get enough uh, nerve <clears throat> to walk over there and get the idea of the height and math of, uh, mass of those things. The area they were walking in, or around actually at the moment, was open for the most part. It was also on the side of what I would call a small to medium sized mountainside. <clears throat> of course, most of the mountain was covered in thick trees, but where, they're, where they were, it had small open areas in between thickets, or islands, if you will, of trees. The nearest home, uh, east or west, was nearly a mile to the southeast. Well, that was ours. But to the north was nothing but forest, all the way to the sea, I believe. Well, unless you take a left on that mountain and end up in the Applegate area. But for the most part, it's all forest back in there. 
I watched as they seemed to be walking around, sometimes on two legs, sometimes on all fours. It was like watching weird mountain gorillas foraging for food, I guess. And as I watched them, it seemed as though they were digging things up, like ground squirrels, voles, and even wood rats, maybe. That, too, I would learn as a matter of fact, as I found the earth all scratched up, as if they, literally, they were literally digging for these things to eat. Every few minutes or so, <clears throat> I could see that it would tilt they would tilt their upper bodies and, and head back and drop something inside their mouth, it seemed. The family. I could tell the smaller ones, I guess, were younger. The hair that covered their bodies was or seemed darker than the bigger Bigfoot. The taller one of the younger ones could not have been bigger or taller than four or five feet, I would fancy to guess. But the weight, I had no idea about that. From my distance, I could not tell if they were male or female. It was getting too late in the afternoon for that. Plus, the shade of the trees they would hover around kept some specifics to a minimum. But you could tell they were younger by size. At least that is what I believe. They also seemed to spend more time than the larger ones on all fours than their taller, taller counterparts did. They also stayed near the adults. Well, one adult in particular at all times. They never seemed to stray more than 15 to 20 feet from it. The larger ones were just that. Large. Huge, in fact. Even from where I sat, these things were tall. I would guess between 7 to 8 foot tall at least. I felt like I was in wildlife safari for crying out loud. Except this safari, well, it was for weird creatures or animals never seen before. I guess more like a Barnum and Bailey show, to be honest. Their walk and movements were weird, ape-like, yes, but weird in their own way, as well. It was as if they glided where they went, and on slightly bended knees. Then, about four minutes or so about um, of watching these things, uh, if I remember correctly, I heard a car coming up the road, and so did this Bigfoot family, as their full attention was now focused on to the east, where the sound was coming from, <coughs> passing by unaware. I wonder how many times we walk by or drive by unaware of what is there in the forests and countrysides of the Pacific Northwest, or anywhere for that matter in North America. I never you know, knew or believed that the possibilities up to that point of what could exist in a world full of people and all the technology today. Even when this happened to me, I had a flip phone, and while I tried to get a picture, it showed nothing from that distance. Nothing. But we all heard a car approaching me and them. Statues. That is the best way to describe how still these things can be, even the young ones. The car, that I could not see, but could hear, made it to within about 100 to 150 yards of us. I watched as the young ones and the older and taller ones all moved to just inside the trees and stood there, each one standing either behind or next to a tree. Like statues, they were, even from where I where. I was, I could see that they stood as firm and still as the trees they seemed to melt into. The thought after a second sent a shiver up my own spine, literally. I even remember looking around myself in current position, to tell you the truth. I looked up as the car sounded as though it was whizzing by rather fast. Those things, the Bigfoot then turned and walked off, up the hill and out of sight after it passed. Three minutes, maybe four tops. I was not sure how long I watched those things, but I did. And although my wife still gives me that weird, funny look when I bring it up from time to time, they were real. And they were there, foraging, I guess. The show must go on. I got in my car, well, SUV, and, SUV, and left to see the concert. I was really going to be late for, but like I said, that was okay. I hated the beginning. I just wanted to hear the music. Amazing, though. Watching those things for that long was absolutely amazing. Of course, when I got home, I was still alone, in the dark, in the woods. Feeling creeped out would stick with me for months, but actually, that would pass. Personally, I am more or less awestruck by what I had the chance to witness. But you were right. It blows my mind thinking how many times I passed these things on the road, home, or simply walking around my own prop property. Just freaky.